Hey everyone, it's Steve here at the DJ Lab, and uh, decided to do another quick video showing the Denon SC6000 Prime running virtual DJ because I am seriously blown away. This has got to be probably the best integration of virtual DJ with a piece of hardware. By far, this is the best because just let me go through this. Might this video might take a little while, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed it up so that way there it doesn't take as much time. But anyways, just look at the folders here. This huge 10 inch screen with 10.1 inch. Right, when you go in here, so check this out. Not only, so okay, you can, let me just open up a thing. So, okay, that's too big, obviously, right? But look how much information you can fit on the screen. And what's really cool is even the spacing. So you can even, now you can really, if you've got good eyes, you can cram a lot of stuff on that screen. And you got the little scroll bar on the side, right? So you got your, Oh, sorry, there we go. There's a scroll bar. So that's a lot of tracks there, and I was scrolling pretty quick, right? And then if you tap and you hold it, right, you can say where you want to load it, your tag editor, the BPM editor, uh, the, PO, the POI editors, video editor, track cleaner, analyzer for BPM, like, I mean, pre-compute stems, file operation, remove from search items, mark as play, everything that you have on a right-click. I mean, so let's just try going to the tag editor. So obviously we go to the tag editor and um, it's pulling up stuff on virtual DJ. So at this point here, you still need to use your laptop screen to do that kind of stuff. So, or you just, you know, you can scroll and just give it a click. And you see it loads up quick. Now here's something interesting that you might not know though, is so you got your hot cues, right? But you have your sampler in here as well, too. So there's all your hot cues that show up. You can go in the software. You can edit the names of those hot cues. But also down here, you've got your sampler. So you can change everything. You can change the way that the sampler, it's a stutter, it's on a hold, or it's on off. Uh, when you go into the view, this is your browser view. But if you click over here, you'll see you also have access to the sampler. So this is great because you're really utilizing the touch screen because nice and big. This is like really, really, I mean, you know, you're changing like, there's... it's good and accurate, you know what I mean? Um, where we got video scratch stuff. So yeah, really, really cool. I hope Denon puts this in the standalone. This would be so great. Let's back up here and get into something else. Like it's just a really great system. They really did a great job putting this all together. So your shift functionality down here as well, too. So let me show you this. So I go shift and I hit my hot cues. It sends me to a cue loop, right? So then I can actually jump my cues. So you got hot cues, cue loops. On the loop side of things, you got your loop. You got your saved loops, so you can load up your loops. On the roll, and I got key cue there. And then you have the slicer and the sampler. So slicer, sampler. Oh, you know what? I was thinking I had yeah, to hold shift, and clearly you don't need to hold shift. Okay, that makes sense. Three, two, one. This is another feature you can do too. So you can hold the view, and then up here you have a whole bunch of sense for virtual DJ. You don't think this thing was made for the damn software. Um, so you can turn on sub decks. So you can have like different sub decks to have dual layers, basically. Um, show your album artwork, your blink time near the end, your key display, uh, auto key match, needle lock, you know, load security. Under the browser, we got show browser info. We'll say yes, why not? Uh, browser auto switch, you got browser review, append when and decide view, two finger scroll, browser text fit, uh, and then the waves. So you have, you can do center or left for your, like, where you want your needle alignment, right? And then you can do shapes or colors. So if you go shapes, and we go look at, it looks... And you see how you got the colors, right? It's like the shapes versus. And that's pretty much what we all are familiar with is that look. So the zoom out, you got to hold shift. You know, when you hit your shortcuts, that pulls up that whole menu down there. So take your shortcuts out, you got a bigger wave. <laughs> 
you want to edit the beat grid, you just got to tap on there and you can adjust the beat grid. Tap it again and get out of it. Um, if you want to change the, the pitch of the key, you just hit the key, adjust it. You can to do a reset, you can match it for the other beat. Um, if you hit, you know, you've got the um, phase meter here, so you can either have like the four bars or if you tap it and then you can have another different because you get like, the little lines, you know what I mean? Same thing you get on CDJs basically. Uh, what else can I tell you? When you press up here, you can say which deck you want to operate. So you can use one deck to operate, you know, up to four because right now I just got virtual DJ set for two. Tap there again, say so you want to go back to eight. Of that. You see how this works? Ah, so my beat rate wasn't centered on the center. Just one another track. Okay, not the best mix in the world, but you get the, you get the idea of what's going on with that. So you have a dual layer. This is really, really cool. Um, I bet it probably does four layers too, but we're not going to get into that. That's another video. Oh, shit. Just trying to think, what else can I... Uh... Yeah, you want to get in the stand when you hit source, and then you can just... You want to restart? Like, nope. Let's stay right where we are. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else that uh, you would need to know. Like I said, you know, you have all of this... Uh, you know, you can even you can go in there and change like where you want the audio to come out of for your sampler. So you can say all decks, obviously. Um, it's just it's amazing. Oh, that's something else I got to show you real quickly too. That I almost forgot. So when you're pulling up a track, so say we're in here, right? And on the side here, you know, you click that and you have the little play, and you can have. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just back up a, a moment here because I have tracks playing currently. So let's stop the track. And I need to go in there to select the other deck and then stop that track. So now we go back into the view. And how do we do it again? So it's like touch cue on the CDJ 3000. And here's what's even better about it. Let me tell you. To stop that. Now it's small, but let me tell you, if you click up in there, how did I do that before? You know, maybe I gotta zoom in. Maybe I gotta make this stuff a little bigger. That might help. Um, because I did see somewhere, it's here, that you could actually tell this thing to start. I think it is set for that. Yeah, so right now I do have it set. So it's starting the tracks not from the beginning, but from halfway through. So you can actually tell it where to start the track at your touch cube when you just scroll through like that. Really cool. And while you're playing, scroll, scroll. Like, it's such a great system. So good. All right, I think that's like as much as I can really tell you about this thing. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Great, great job, Virtual DJ. It's been around a long time, that VDJ, man, and they've come a long way too. They can do so much stuff. Oh, did I even mention? Did I even mention? Jesus, I'm missing one of the big deals here. And one of the big deals. You see, now this is something you have to go into Virtual DJ and change. So you go up there and you click and you want to tell. Um, so you have all your chef functionality, right? So like instead of being a key cue, for instance, I want to do the stems. So watch, we go into the... Um, hold on, why is this not doing what I want it to do?
Okay, now we're in the stems. And so you can control the touch screen or you can control the touch screen. So the only downfall is that when it's engaged, it's brighter, and when it's disengaged, it's a little darker. There's not much of a difference, but you can see it on the screen here too, right? Anyways, I was trying to make this a short, sweet one, but I'm guessing I'm going to have to speed it up, and hopefully it works out. That's it, guys. I'll talk to you all later.